and hello. I think we're live. Oops, that's recording. <laughs> Let's try that again. Hello, YouTube. Have we got anybody watching us yet? I'm not sure if we do. Um, yeah, a lot of people on ever, Instagram. Ever, yeah, loads of people on Instagram. So we went live on Instagram first, then we started Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Can't see if anybody's live on Facebook yet. And now on YouTube as well. So if you've clicked the link from our homepage on our website or my countless numbers of social media links, I've been going crazy on that, um, then you'd have ended up on this page. And uh, hopefully you've remembered to check back now at eight o'clock. So we're about 40 seconds in. I'm not sure how long this this live stream is going to last. So um, and we haven't really prepared, prepared anything at all, have no, we? it's going to be fluid. Yeah, so thanks everybody on Instagram tuning in here. Um, we've got 23 people on Instagram. Um, we have absolutely nobody on YouTube yet. <laughs> so but, we're going to focus on Instagram. So we might end up focusing on Instagram <laughs> here, but that's fine. Um, so we have, is that Kate Wakely? Yeah, she's on board. Skipping chains, nice one. Look at all this. <laughs> Hello Andy from Gear Mech Hanger. Awesome. So we haven't really prepared a lot for this stream, but the purpose of it is for you, our customers, uh, whether you be a shop and you buy from us in, in the trade or you've bought uh, from us personally, to give you a better insight into who we are uh, being cyclerized. And of course, if you're tuning in on Instagram, which almost all of you are, but we've got four people on YouTube now, hello, um, then yeah, you'll be able to get a snapshot of who we are, cyclerized. We own the uh, Instagram handle that uh, we've got a lot of followers on, as well as the import distribution business behind it. I'm doing a lot of talking, aren't I? You really are. And we might have a bit of a technical issue coming up in that our dog, Oscar, is just down here and he's trying to sneak his way in because he doesn't like being away from us. <laughs> he doesn't know how to get how to get in past all of, past the setup. So go easy. He's he's finding his way. He's gonna end up in my lap in a minute. Um hey, C's MTB, he's on YouTube. Nice one, buddy. Um, YouTube is definitely going to be a priority platform for this um, and we are streaming on three devices at once so I'm not sure how quick this is going to be. Um, what's happening on Instagram? I'm just showing everyone Oscar because he's, yeah. he's decided to come and join us. Yes, <laughs> he has. Um, so we're cyclorized. so uh, should we just give you guys a lowdown on who we are and then you can ask us some questions maybe. Mountain Bike Addicts on YouTube, hey good to see you, thanks a lot for commenting. Um, and so, shall we start with, why have we decided to do a, a, a YouTube stream? Um, because you told me I had to. Because I told Sean, this is Sean by the way, she's my wife, my partner in business and business. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so we did the London Bike Show at the weekend. We certainly did. And we had a great experience, and it seemed like we had great feedback from everybody, but what was standout was how we connected with a lot of our customers yeah. people have bought from us and people who we hope will buy from us um and we want to kind of reach out to you and show you a little bit more about who who we are <laughs> so i'll do most of the talking then um it's your idea. <laughs> i know looks like tom mckay's on facebook hey guys how's it going guy i've uh, got three watchers on facebook why don't you, everybody else say hello hello uh, we've got seven on YouTube now. This is cool. Dirt Junkies is here. You said that, didn't you? Yeah. Okay. Um, Storm Emma has frozen the feed. Oh, dear. Yes. It's pretty snowy out there. What's it like where you are? Oh, yeah. We, we've got a lot of snow. We've got a lot of snow. We're in Poole and Dorset, and it never snows in Poole and Dorset, although I've lived here four years, and it is the second time I've seen it snow. Um, but it's snowing quick, and it's really windy with really powdery snow, so there's lots of snow drifts. Um, I think if you had a 4x4 on a snowboard, it could be quite fun. Yeah. Um, so, brief introduction to cycling, shall we, shall we do? Um, we're we're going to come up with a few bits, So, and when you um, start asking us questions... Ooh, here we go, here's a question. Mountain bike addicts. What are you riding? Well, we are both on coats. We are. I'm on a hand job. Sean loves a hand job. <laughs> she has a cove hand job. Um, which is all black, it's 1 by 11 um, and you in it a bit? Yeah, I would say that I'm still quite new to the whole um, mountain biking thing. It's definitely more Thomas's thing than mine, but um, I'm getting into it and I'm enjoying riding and I just kind of need to build my confidence a bit more and believe in myself a bit more, which I think is probably quite a common 
theme for a lot of riders out there. Yeah, definitely. I, I think I'd say with Oshan, she puts herself down a little bit or has the, she's a bit scared of things. Um, and actually, when it comes to technical trails and technical ability, she learns really quickly and she's quite confident as soon as she masters which one's the front, which one's the rear brake. Mm. Um, I yeah. don't like brakes very much. She doesn't like brakes, which is good because she's faster. <laughs> um, and you are riding? I ride a Cove Hummer tie. Um, I, I Instagram all my bikes all the time. Um, so I've got a Hummer tie hardtail. It's uh, 650B, um, kitted out with... A book saddle, which I love, XX1, Middleburn Cranks, it's really pimped out. I love that bike. And I've got a specialised Stump Jumper S Works, um, which is supposed to be a single speed, but I've got gears on it at the moment. Um, but it's fully rigid. I quite like that. If you could have any bike in the world, what would you have? What's your, what is your Somebody's ultimate? Somebody's bound to ask that. What is your ultimate ride? Um, E-bike and snowboard. That is what I should have said. Not 4 by 4 on a snowboard. <laughs> hey DH for all that's Adrian Hi, he's on YouTube, YouTube. thanks buddy <laughs> um, go and follow DH for all on Instagram he's supported us tons with loads of promotions and marketing uh, marketing space so go and follow him quick question on Instagram how many mountains were in pool? <laughs> how many mountains were in pool? <laughs> so we're into mountain biking which actually here if you had a fat bike this is where you should have a fat bike mm. there's lots of sand yeah, there aren't many mountains. However, we are relocating in August and we're off to Wales. So um, I think our mountain biking is going to get a lot better because we'll yeah. have mountains for a start. Yeah, we're going to move to central Wales near mm -hmm. the borders. Um, so it'll be about an hour and 15 minutes from Bike Park Wales, about an hour and a half from Lindegler. So something like that's going to be pretty cool. A couple of questions. I don't want to lose them on Instagram. What's your favourite product? Oh, product. Okay, this is quite a big one. What about you, Sean? What about you? Do you, do you have a favourite product? Of our products? Or... Oh, that's a good question. Uh, do you mean any product at all? Do you mean of ours? And what is the best bike for you? We're going to move quicker. Product. Um, product, if it's our product, it would have to be smooth for me. Smooth. It's a faultless product. We'll get onto that later, though. Um, my favourite product, I'm going to say Brooks Saddles, because they're beautiful, they're different... I've been to the factory. I thought it was a, an amazing experience, um, and uh, you know it's, we don't we don't stock them, but I love them. But maybe one day, who knows? Um, what was the best bike fit for for us? Um, I think that one's for Tom to answer because, as I've already alluded to, I'm not um, the. I, it's not my passion. Well, I'd say it is my passion, but I just I don't know as much about mountain biking as Thomas does. She likes going for a bike ride, um, but doesn't necessarily know what she's. What bike she's riding. Mm. I got around all the um, innuendo oriented mm -hmm. bike. She loves riding in it. Anyway, so um, what best bike for me? I need lots of bikes. I love a hardtail. I love a full suspension bike. Um, nothing carbon fiber. Had enough of that material. Titanium, aluminium, steel, all the way. Um, so skipping chains on Instagram's asked if we're going to bespoke this year. We are going to bespoke. Um, whether it's for a day just to visit as a punter or to get involved in the show. We're not sure yet. Um, I won't uh, give you any more information on that just yet, uh, but it won't be for strictly for cyclerise if we do go as, a, as anything other than a punter. Definitely. That's it for questions for Insta. It is a timeless uh, product, What colours are due next for the Lurie straps? Oh. Blue, yellow, would be... Ding. Yes, it would. Now... Okay, look, we've just, we haven't put it out just yet, but we have, well, we've put some photos out before, um, and we have decided, thanks to some popular feedback, that we're going to go with orange. Um, we're also going to go with pink. And we are going to go with indigo purple. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Let's make sure it's on all the, all the medias. Um... Now, we had a, a teal green. Uh, not many people were into that. Uh, the problem we have, Sean, tell them why we don't have flow yellow coming just yet and other colours. Um, it, it's sourcing this particular webbing that we use. So we're quite particular about what, what webbing we have. Um, and being quite new to this, we're still sourcing different webbing. Had quite an exciting package arrive today that had loads of different webbing in it and some really nice fluoro colours, so um, hopefully we're going to get those sourced really soon. We'll get them on order, and we'll get them out to you guys as soon as we can. Yes, um, absolutely. So these should be available from the 
20th, 25th of March, available to buy, and you can actually head over to um, luribike.co.uk and uh, place pre-orders now. Um, very quick question that came in from Chris at Alliance MTB. Oh, Hi. cheers, Chris. Hi, Chris. Uh, how many tools have you broken, Thomas? How many tools have I broken? Yeah, so I'm sure that's not the question. Uh, oh, no, bro bikes. I bikes. Think bikes, yes. God, it's going too quick for me. We can, we can scroll. Oh, there we go. See, how we many bikes? Scroll technology, eh? <laughs> how many bikes have I broken? Oh, God. <laughs> well, I've cracked two Turner RFX carbons. Two. Um, the third one is in a box waiting to sell, and this isn't really an advert to help sell it, is it? Um, one of the reasons I don't want carbon anymore, I'm too heavy. Um, I've done in a Mondraker Foxy XR carbon frame. I've done in... Um, I can't remember what other bikes I've had. I've about 44 mountain bikes I've had, and I've broken almost all of them. I've snapped uh, eight yetis. Yeah. I did crack a nolly. Um, <laughs> so in answer to your <laughs> question, Chris, a couple? <laughs> yeah, I've, I've broken a lot. A lot of bikes. Mm. Um, hence, I'm looking for strength and functionality over weight for my next bike. Screw carbon. It's going to be aluminium or steel, probably. Um, I can't afford titanium. Okay. Another question we've got there, would you guys ever do giveaways? Well, every Saturday we do a Facebook giveaway. So if you're not already following our Facebook page, please do. Um, as I say, every Saturday we've got a giveaway on there. Uh, we missed it last weekend because we were at the London Bike Show, which means we're doing a double whammy this weekend. So please get involved. Just give us a follow on Facebook. I have no idea what she's got planned, but I'm sure it'll be good. Uh, look out for the Downland stand. Ah, skipping chain, so you'll be ah, sweet. bespoke. Yeah, nice one. Which is awesome. We'll hook up with you guys Yeah, there. definitely. We'll be manning it. Um, hi, my name is Mobin. Oh, you're from Iran. Nice one, buddy. Hello. Bikes ever. 44. Yes, 44. Blimey, steel is real. Stanton, then. I do like the Stanton. Oh, yeah. Um, we saw that at the London Bike Show, the yeah. last one. We were surrounded by British frame builders. We had um, Kotick right next to us, Stanton just the other side of that. Bird. Um, bird bikes sick. right there as well. Sick. Yeah. Man, okay, sick. They were they were nailing it at the moment. Mm -hmm. Their bikes, their stand, their attitude. Yeah, big up awesome. to sick. They've yeah. got it nailed. So to address some other questions, I think a sick. Tie hardtail with a pinion gearbox would be amazing, but I don't need another hardtail. I need a full suspension bike. And sick of working on a couple of prototypes that I really like the look of. Um, I've got a question here from Frankie that we get quite often and we often get contacted about this. Any tips for a younger rider looking for sponsors? So we do quite often get approached, especially on Instagram, by people that want to um, be sponsored by us. Any tips mm. that you can think of, Tom? Yeah, so in past jobs I've um, been sent an awful lot of CVs and I've had to consider a lot of people for uh, sponsorship and support. The thing I always that always stood out to me was... I was always a busy person, but I wanted to make sure whoever I was going to support was going to give a good quality of content. So if you're reaching out to companies to, um, to ask them what you want, um, that's, that's great. But most importantly, tell them what you can do for them. Mm. Don't tell them about your plans, what you want to achieve, what you want to do. It's not just about you. It's about what you can deliver. And just bear that in mind whenever you're talking to a potential sponsor. Yeah, I mean, we quite often get generic messages, so it's quite nice that people have done the research um, into the companies that they're contacting, and they kind of know what brands we represent, etc. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we've got uh, Nash Cycling up on um, uh, Facebook there. Uh, he's just started a, a YouTube channel, so definitely go and check out Nash Cycling. Um, uh, he's uh, wishing us good luck for this, which is nice. And Sidgwick's up there as well. Uh, what British brand of mountain bikes, uh, mountain bike, are you getting next? Well, that's an interesting one, Sidge, because I've never had a British mountain bike. So my first British mountain bike could be next. I would really like. I'm looking up at Facebook, by the way. <laughs> um, I would really like a British brand, and uh, Sick would be amazing if they have a bike that suits every need. I want it to, mm. and. The bike that they seem to be drawing up on Cal at the moment could be that bike, but who knows. I also like Nikolai. I love BTR, the Pinner. Awesome bike, but it's pretty heavy, so not really sure. So um, just talking about a few more products that we do, we've got Smooth Lube and Smooth Prep here. Smooth Prep is very new. 
Hang on, I'll just try and get it onto <laughs> everything. Hello. Yeah. Um, we are currently getting this shipped over to the UK so that we can start giving it out to our customers. Well, not giving. You know, we need to make a living. We do, selling it. Tell us a bit about Smooth. Um, now, you've probably seen these red bottles all over the place. Um, there's a reason for that, because they are so good. Um, they, yeah. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how about that? They're also available in giant flat bottles. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's from South Africa, formulated for uh, epic endurance style racing, where... Uh, the carrying spare lube on a one two hundred mile race isn't viable. Um, it's super clean, lasts forever, um, and so yeah, that's what we've. Um, that's our hero product at the moment, I think. And then smooth prep. That's not smooth prep. <laughs> this is degreaser. So when people say, "Oh great, so how do I prepare my chain?" This is how you prepare your chain. Uh, we're just working on getting some MSDS uh, clarification sorted so we can get it shipped to customers. Um, it'll be with us and ready to get to you in six to eight weeks' time. Um, now, because of all the snow, um, my uh, one of my best men, Chris Buller, he's finally joined us on YouTube. So Yay! I'm so glad. Uh, he's watching from the traffic jam. He is currently stuck on the A31 in the New Forest. It's amazing he's got some enough signal to watch this. But thanks for tuning in, Chris. Send help. Anyone send, send help. help. <laughs> he's, he's in a massive queue. He's been there for hours now. Um, I think he told me he was getting stuck at about four, leaving Bournemouth, and now he's out on the A31. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and Orihi, uh, Jamie there, um, thanks a lot for, for loving Smooth. Uh, Tim wants <laughs> us to start over again, which I'm sure the rest of you probably don't want no, us to we, do. No, nobody wants to watch this. It's amazing we've still got this many watches on all, <laughs> of, on all these platforms. The good thing is, though, Tim, that, that bloke, that Tim from Wales, he's lovely. Um... Make sure, uh, not make sure, this video will be saved. So once we've finished, you can go back and watch the whole thing over. Okay, so Frankie is with a good question today on Instagram. Uh, were you into mountain bike where you were, when you were younger? If so, how could you pay for these bikes? They cost thousands. <laughs> yeah, Frankie, that's a really, really good point. Bikes are really expensive now, but they used to be expensive in the old days too. You just didn't get much for your money. Uh, now technology has come along so much further. Um, you spend a lot of money, but you get a lot of technology, and that that's a phrase Doddy said on GMBN Tech Channel, just um, I watched earlier today. Um, bikes are amazing now. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I started mountain biking enthusiastically at 13, started, did my first real wheelie at 14, and um, I worked in a bike shop from the age of 15, uh, and that's how I could afford decent bikes. Um, I was buying stuff at trade price, and I'd get all my family to give me money for Christmas and birthdays, and I'd buy everything I could. But I started off with cheap aluminium hardtails, I bought some decent suspension forks, bought the bits that mattered, and um, upgraded as I went. Just, where, what's that? <laughs> Terry can hear Oscar scratching. <laughs> can you? <laughs> and Dan wants to see the hands. Hi, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so to afford bikes, mate, there's so many, there's so many pictures of awesome bikes. It's like... It's like watch um, a young teenage girl reading Glamour magazine and seeing all, all the blood cell, um, uh, all the eyes whitened artificially and stuff. You're seeing all these awesome bikes out there, and yes, they are out there, but you don't have to have everything now. Just work hard, get a job, buy bits bit by bit, and you'll get the bikes you want. So, uh, when a uh, hi, my sister is on Facebook watching us. Uh, she says, oh, Tom, Tom is wagging his tail hard because of the noise <laughs> that Oscar's making. <laughs> Either or. So, uh, moving swiftly onwards, because Tom does tend to talk quite a lot. I do. Uh, here we have one of our stem captain clocks, which is a little bit difficult to see in this light. Well, why don't we just go like, that's a stem captain top cap there. clock. Yeah, but then I can go like this, you see. And um, they come in all sorts of different colours, don't they? They do. Uh, and they're really neat. Yeah. It's one of those products you can't do without once you have one. They're pretty popular and um, they're about to start arriving nice with us in lots, in carbon. lots of different colours. Nice bike. Stop it. I'm just addressing everybody before. Tell uh, me about uh, this. Aha! Uh -huh. This is Goop. Although, is this showing up back to front? There you go. This is Goop. Dusk. Um, Goop is our next... Um, Pam wants to see Oscar. Mm. I'm sure he'll be on our lap in, in a few moments, Pam. So um, this is Goop Industries. It's from San Diego, and it's going to be our next product that arrives at the end of March. 
Um, it can only be shipped, uh, not air freighted, because it's compressed canister, so that's why it takes so long, and this is the only can we have. Um, the idea of this is it's a combined CO2 canister and tubeless sealant, so it inflates um, an inner tubed tyre, a tubular tyre, or a tubeless tyre, um, 29 inch by 2.4 inch tyre up to 29 psi, which is way more than your average CO2 canister, and the latex-based solution will mix successfully with stands and orange seal tubeless sealants, uh, pitched towards enduro races, road races, it's an emergency parachute when all other fixes won't work, and this will get you running again, riding again in seconds um, without the need to change it in a tube. So, question on YouTube, what's your favorite conditions to ride in? Snow isn't bad. <laughs> and Matt. thanks Matt for that question. Yeah, cheers Matt. Um, I don't like riding in the snow. <laughs> It like it, it make, takes a great picture, but generally speaking, the ground underneath gets uh, soppy and muddy and wet and slippery. Actually, the snow we've got at the moment is really fluffy, and underneath is solid, so it would actually make quite a decent ride. But it's so windy out there, that's not for me. Um, I I just love a Utah, a Moab kind of condition. I love dry, loose dirt. Um, yeah, dust, dust for miles. What's what's this? What's Frankie saying? Uh, he's saying he's got a hardtail, which is six hundred pounds mm -hmm. second hand. My brake forks from a big drop. Yeah. When the bike shop said they were cheap, it was hard telling my dad when they. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's the thing. Unfortunately, um, your dad will get used to this. You will break bikes. Um, I had a fully rigid bike, and my dad bought me a full suspension bike when I was I can't don't know sixteen or some something. It's a cool, fairly cool bike, I suppose. Um, first day's riding I cased a great big double I landed front wheel back and uh, rear wheel with the jump landing in between and I stretched the bike bent the forks mm. so uh, I broke, broke them immediately it's going to happen um, he'll get used to it and you need to find a way to earn some more money to uh, replace what you break and you'll break a lot uh, Tim has just asked a good question on YouTube just going back to Goop mm. that we were talking about um, so it's a throwaway product. Is it recyclable or refillable? Okay, good question, Tim. The can is recyclable. It's an aluminium can. Uh, recycle it with your uh, other cans. Um, the sealant is latex, so in the same regard to stands and orange peel, um, it isn't actually harmful to the environment. It will biodegrade. Uh, unfortunately, it is a one-use can. It cannot be refilled. It is angled towards racing situation where using this will keep you in a race as opposed to having to swap inner tubes and potentially having to drop out. Um, it's not designed to be used on a daily basis. It'll prove uneconomical. And it comes with a holster, so you can attach it to your bike. So um, last product that we do that we haven't really talked about is the timber bag. There it is. It's really noisy. <laughs> um, so, Timberbell originates from America. San Diego. San Diego. Well. And, and it's an advocacy tool, really, from the shared trails. So you activate it to let other trail users know that you're coming. So it might be dog walkers. It might be animals. It could be anything. And then once you're done with it, you just lock it out and it's silenced. And it basically works on the vibrations of the trail, so you don't have to do anything whilst you're riding along it will just do all the work itself. It's a really, really neat gadget and it's what started our company. So we're very passionate about it. We really love it. And I think it's something that once you've got it, people think, how did I live without that? Absolutely. Yeah. So Sean nailed the product. Um, it is what started Cyclewise. Uh, we had ordered 30 or 40 of these from, from Timber in San Diego with the thought of, we'll get them in, we'll put them on a website, we'll just see if we sell any. Um, and Chips on Single Track Magazine included it in his Fresh Goods Friday because he came back from Sea Otter with a sample. Um, and yeah, it going on Fresh Goods Friday that day meant we had to launch our website there and then. Mm. So Cyclewise wasn't the last, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't necessarily going to be the name of our company, but it was the name that we'd come up, up with by that moment. And we had to lit, we had to launch. So I quickly got to work, spent six hours on the website. And here we are. Launched. Um, we did a logo later. We did everything else later. Mm -hmm. But we sold those 30 bells that weekend. So we ordered another 50 and then 100 and then 200 and then so thousands of bells later. 
here we are. I don't want to forget a couple of questions that we had. It is um, Terry, yes. Awesome product. <laughs> couple of questions that we had on Facebook prior to us starting. Uh, where do you plan on going next? I think he means, this is from Sean, I think he means with the business rather than vacation. If it is vacation, we're off to Greece in June for our wedding anniversary. <laughs> but I think he means with the business. Yeah, we've got three weeks in June in, three weeks in June? Well, yeah, three weeks in June in Greece, which is, uh, again, back to where we got married a couple of years ago which would be nice. But um, yeah, so Sean, <laughs> Sean Run Dutton on Facebook, where do you plan on going next? So as a business, we've recently launched our own brand, which is Lurie. That's how you pronounce it, Lurie. It means strap in Greek. It's a British brand, but it sounds good. And it actually, you know, it actually means what it is. Um, and so we're going to develop the Lurie brand. Mm -hmm. Got some great product ideas. Um, one product idea I'm in, I'm particularly excited about that I think would be a real game changer in mountain biking. He's not going to say anymore. <laughs> I'll say it. It's it's going to be a hydration solution for people who want to ride packless. The whole brand is about packless riding. Um, that's not for everybody. And that ties in quite nicely to um, a question that my sister Wenna posted mm. on Facebook prior to us starting as well. And she said, when's Oscar going to get his own range? So you probably have seen our dog, Oscar. He's just on the sofa asleep there, looking very disapproving at all the noise we're making in the lounge. Um, he's a Hungarian Vizsla. He uh, absolutely loves chasing Thomas and I on the mountain bikes. And we'd really like to expand Luri so that it would cover some dog accessories and specifically dog accessories that are tailored towards um, mountain biking with your dog. So it's really nice having them off the lead and on the trails, but occasionally you do have to do some road work. Um, and there isn't any product out there that we know of at the moment that really covers that. So I think that's another direction as well that we'd really like to take Luri in. Definitely. Um, yeah, so that's Luri. We don't have any plans to seek new other, any other new brands at the moment we have our hands full with what we have at the moment we've got some great opportunities with smooth and goop coming soon and lurie which is showing great promise in very early days so um, i think we're going to keep working hard on what we currently have and 2019 could bring a couple of um, other big big things but we'll talk about that another time Nash Cycling's asked, are your branded hoodies for sale anywhere? They look awesome, or is it that just you guys only? No, we have them for sale. They're on our website, so head over to cyclerise.com. Yeah. I will add, though, unless you were going to add already. Oh, she hates it when I interrupt her. We don't actually have any in stock at the moment. Um, so place an order. It will be with you uh, probably in about a week. Mm. Um, these are really nice ones. They're really thick they're called um, chunky hoodies so um, a lot of people who spend a lot of time in their hoodies but want them branded up choose choose this model it's, it's really nice really cozy mm. um mm. um C's mtb has asked will there be more types of luri strap um yes essentially there will be um he did ask something similar to the super eight strap um Louis is an alternative to other straps that are out there and it's British made and it's cheaper and it's available, which is our key thing. Mm -hmm. So when we are looking to expand the range. We're looking to do kind of like a simple strap that will be cheaper. Um, we're mm -hmm. looking to see other storage solutions that we can do. So it is going to be a, a big range, yeah. not just in colours, but in types of design as well. Um, so we just launched with the saddle and the frame to begin with just to find our feet with it and we sold out so quickly so now we're just mm. you know looking to expand and grow our range absolutely of products and we're so keen to have it all made in the UK mm. so in some ways that could be a bit limiting um, with how quickly we can source certain products or have, have things produced but having said that because they are made locally we can we do have fairly short lead times um, so it's going to be a really exciting period for us with Louis. So thank you for that question. Um, I did notice one question we forgot for Matt on YouTube. Mm -hmm. You want to read that one? Uh, is there an underground brand that you'd like to get your hands on? Don't say Middleburn. Why not say Middleburn? Um, Matt <laughs> says don't say Middleburn because I know Matt and he knows that I like alternative products. Mm. Um, if everybody buys race face i'm not going to buy race face if 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 you tell me to do something i'm not going to want to do it 
I'm not going to want to do it. I will still do it. Because I know, I know yeah. Um, <laughs> Middleburn, we, we might, you might find Middleburn products uh, for sale on our website at some point. Um, but we won't be officially, um, uh, it's a British brand. They already sell around the country. Um, they don't need a British uh, distributor or anything like that. Um, there are some products I'd love to get my hands on. Uh, this isn't the forum for uh, publicising that, though. Uh, so, question on Facebook from my sister. What's been your most scary and or most challenging ride? Um, well, I'm going to hand that straight over to Thomas. What was the question? I wasn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds about normal. Uh, what's been your most scary and or most challenging ride? Right. Okay. That's a really good question. From Wenner. I, I think, Wenner, you know the answer to this. <laughs> um, I think it's over to Moab in Utah. And there's loads of scary trails over there, but it was, um, why can't I remember the name of the trail all of a sudden? Whole Enchilada? No, not the Whole Enchilada. That's an amazing trail, but it's not scary. Mm, I'm trying to think of the other ones. They're all on your YouTube Portal, channel. Portal Trail. Yeah, Portal. It's Poison Spider, um, Gold Bar, that's all cool. And then Portal Trail coming down. That was terrifying. I've got a video on my personal YouTube account. You can search Bike Dibley on uh, YouTube. Um, plug. Plug. <laughs> uh, it's a 25 minute video I'm amazed how many people managed to actually watch that all the way through mm. but I swore a lot I screamed a lot a lot of people seem to find it entertaining um, but that was definitely the scariest trail I've ridden uh, there's other scarier trails that I haven't managed to ride uh, so MTB Addicts uh, opinions on Giant Rain Advanced um, it's been a long time since I've worked in a bike shop and had experience with giant bikes um Actually, have I ever worked in a bike shop where we sold Giant? Maybe. Um, it's a decent bike, isn't it? The advanced model is well specced. Giant Reigns have been pretty raved about. Uh, I've never ridden one. So all I can say is it's a decent brand. It's a widely respected model. So yeah, it's cool. Hope that's enough. Perfect. Uh, so we've kind of waffled on for 30 minutes. We have. So, if you've got any more questions, fire them up now and we'll answer them and then we'll probably look to kind of draw this to a close. Thanks everyone for sticking with us. Yeah. I'm really impressed. I'm really impressed. I'm, <laughs> I'm amazed that 32 minutes in, we've still got 12 people watching on YouTube. We've still got six on Instagram, although that was in the 20s 50, or 50s yeah, 50, oh, 20. at some point. And five on and Facebook. And five on Facebook, which is pretty cool. And you know what? Even though I messaged my mum to remind her to tune in, <laughs> she's not here. She's not here. <laughs> She doesn't love fail. me at all. Epic fail. <laughs> um, cool. So thanks a lot, everybody, for watching. I think we're going to start signing out. Oh, we've got one more question from C's MTB on YouTube. Do you plan to enter some MTB events in the future, or is it not your thing? That's a good question. Um, it's not really my thing. It should be. I love riding my bike. I love riding it fast, and I love riding it an inch behind the guy in front, and I love overtaking and being the first up things and first down things. Love that. But I like to do a section of trail as fast as I can, have as much fun doing it, um, and then stop and talk about it with my mates. So maybe enduro racing is something I probably actually enjoy. So I would like to do an enduro race, I would. And since we sponsor the Pedal Hounds Enduro Series, we I probably should get along to one or two of those. I'm just trying to get Oscar to jump up. Come on. Okay, come on, Oscar. Let's, let's see if we can get Oscar <laughs> Say up. Say hi. Oscar. No, oh, you no, need to go up that way. Come don't, on. don't knock the computer Oscar. off. Uh -uh. I think he wants to come this happen. way. No. Okay, I think we're going to come in. All right. <laughs> Facebook's going to go first. See you later, guys. Bye-bye. YouTube, really quickly, will there be a stand MTB meetup to buy your products? Unfortunately, not this year. We're on holiday. We are. Um, we planned the holiday before we knew the dates for MTB meetup, but next year we will get on it and get sorted. Yeah, it turns out there's all sorts of events happening in June that we mm. would have liked to. Um, Tweed Love, we'd have loved to go to that this year, but it's in June. MTB meetup, June. Um... There's another show in June that I think we'd have liked to have gone to, so yeah. sorry. But maybe 2018, 19. Yeah. It's anyway. 2018 now, isn't it? Cool. <laughs> See you later, Instagram. Inst Instagram's going to go now. Chira. Thanks for watching. And finally, bye-bye, YouTube. Instagram, we had 250 viewers. How cool is that? Yeah, cool. Thanks a lot for tuning in. And we're 